how to build Slim's Warehouse, a HO scale model roll road building. Hi modelers, it's Chris the modeler at ABR Model Works and in this video we're going to cover the building of Slim's Warehouse. Slim's Warehouse is a background building used to produce the illusion that the roll road goes on beyond your bench top. This type of building is often referred to as a flat or a low relief building. It's designed to go against the background wall. The construction of this kit is based on the modular model building system, which means you have a vast array of options when it comes to tailoring it to suit your model railroad. I chose to build this model to have a more modern look and feel, similar to today's concrete tilt-up buildings. However, the modular model building system has been designed to produce model buildings from the 1920s until today. So in terms of style, you have a lot of choice and you can tailor this building to suit your particular needs. You can add panels to make the building longer or wider, or in fact you can add enough panels to turn it into a complete building by itself. It can also be combined with other modular model building system kits. It is four panels wide and a quarter panel deep. However, you can make it flat against the background if you wish. And it comes with 63 different 3D printed scenic details to complete the structure, including 205 litre or 44 gallon metal drums, empty wooden pallets, medium and large crates, a hand trolley and guardrails at the end of the platform, awnings to cover the roller doors, and of course windows and Slim's warehouse sign. Now if you choose you can add more scenic detail parts either to change the look of the building or to enhance the building. We have quite a range of scenic detail parts in packs including packs like the platform and freight details pack, additional empty wooden pallets in multiple packs, packs containing a variety of crates and many more. Getting started. The first thing you should do is lay out the parts and familiarise yourself. The panels, the quarter panels, the pilasters and the quarter pilasters, the roller door, the platforms, the floor pieces and the 3D parts. Getting the parts ready for assembly. Now to get a nice finish on the building for painting, I like to sand the MDF panels and pieces with a 320 grit 3M sanding block. The other thing that I like to do is use my sanding table and spray booth air to move the dust particles away so that I'm not breathing them in. Now pop out the panels from their holding frames and the pieces that are inside for windows and openings etc. plus all of the little holding tabs where the panels join together. Now in this building, we're going to keep both the top section, the facade, and the ground floor section of the panels, so don't break those away. Now with the quarter panels, when you pop those out, the tabs that you're going to break away are only on one side, and that is the side that's going to connect to the full panels. Now once you've broken away all the tabs, you need to sand the little joining points where the tabs were connected to the panels. Just do this with an emery stick and lightly rub it back so that that little pimple section disappears. Then test fit to make sure that the two panels will go together. Now you'll note here that I made a mistake and broke away the tabs on both sides. Please be aware that if you do that you'll end up with a hole where it goes up against the background so you just need to take care there and only do it on one side and that's the side that's connecting to the panel itself. Now the cleanup process is the same for fitting the roller doors and windows. You simply file the edges inside the panel and the edges of the roller door or window itself to make it a nice snug fit. Now when sanding the roller doors so that they'll fit inside the panel, lightly sand all of the edges, holding them carefully straight up and down so that you get a nice square edge. Repeat that process until the roller door fits snugly inside its opening. 
Once sanded, it should be just a nice snug fit so that the roller door will stay within the opening itself. Now break away the 3D printed window from the sprues. You don't necessarily need a sprue cutter for this, but it's advisable to use one. The surface where the sprues are connecting on windows is going to be sanded, so it's not quite as critical. It's more about whether or not you're comfortable to break them away without breaking the window itself. Repeat the same process for the 3D printed windows. However, you just need to be a little more careful when you're holding them as the plastic itself is a lot softer than the timber. But nevertheless, sand away each side gently, looking as you go to make sure that you're sanding the right area. Now I've test fitted all of the front panels so they all nicely fit together. I've also sanded and fitted each of the roller doors and the windows. Now there's four sections below the windows. Now those sections below the windows, I've kept the pieces that came within the panel and I'm rolling them over and I'm going to be placing them in there, but I'm going to be placing them with a step because this is a more of a modern looking building and I wanted to produce a little bit of an architectural feature at this point. As you can see from the video, it's not a large step, but it's just subtle enough to give it another dimension as far as the, the look of the building is concerned. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I made a mistake and on one of the quarter panels, I broke away all of the tabs. So I'll be gluing those pieces back in because it needs to be flat at that point to go up against the wall. And on the other quarter panel, I'll be breaking away those particular tabs so that they will then line up with that end of the building itself. That way you'll end up with a stepped face up against your background. Gluing the panels together. Now it's time to glue the panels together. So you need to make sure that the panel is lining up square. And the way I do this is I use a couple of magnets to place the, a ruler on my metal bench top. I roll the panel over and place it up against the ruler to make sure that the panel is going to be square. The reason for rolling it over is so that the front of the facade is flat just in case the panel thickness varies slightly. Then I place a magnet on the panel to hold it down for gluing. Next I take the next panel and put a small bead of glue along the edge where the panels key together and slide it up against the panel that's already on the build plate and then get a magnet to hold it in place while it dries. Now I like to use Deluxe Material Speed Bond as a glue for a number of reasons but mainly because it's nice and strong and dries fast. I also use their little bottle applicator to put the glue on and it allows me to control the amount of glue I'm placing down. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since gluing the panels together, so it's time to remove the magnets and lift the panels off the build plate. And as you can see, they're strong enough to handle carefully at this point in time. Fitting the floor supports. Now we're going to fit the floor supports. There are three sizes available. The bottom one is for the ground floor. The one in the middle is for the first floor support and the largest one at the top is to support the roof area. Now take an emery board and clean up the edges where the little joining pimple was so that you get the floor to sit flat on its support. Now to fit the floor supports take one of the quarter panels and temporarily sit it in its position on the end and then simply line up each of the floor supports one against the next working across the building. When you get to the end you'll notice that it is hanging over. Now you'll break off the short tab because this is a front of the building. So front of the building and rear of the building it's the short tab that you break away. If you're making a wall up for the sides it's the longer one that you break away and that gives you the correct spacing. Now start by gluing one of the end pieces in place 
using a couple of magnets to support it and keep it square. Then glue each of the floor spaces one after the other across the bottom, making sure that the floor spacer lines up with the bottom of the panels so that the floor itself will be at the correct height for the opening. And do the same for the floor supports for the top as well. Followed by doing the floor supports for the middle of the building, making sure that the bottom of the floor support lines up with the top of the opening below it. Next we'll add the floors. We'll do this by adding each of the floors one at a time and using some magnets to hold them in place. Once the floors have been fitted, we'll then add the last of the quarter panels to the end of the building to complete that whole facade. Once the glue dries, we'll give it a very light sand and get it ready for undercoating with some sand sealer. Sealing the panels and getting ready for painting. I like to use the deluxe material sand and seal. It's available from most good hobby shops. However, you'll find it in the model aircraft section, not in the model railway area. There's no real secret to this. It's just a case of brushing it on to give yourself a nice smooth finish and making sure that all the surfaces are coated. And then once dry, just giving it a light rub with some 320 grit sandpaper. I tend to like to use the 3M sanding blocks. They do a good job. Now the sanding sealer is good and dry and I'm now going to give it a light rub with the sanding block just to take any high spots off that happen as a result of adding the sanding sealer to the surface or any grit that may have stuck to the surface as well. Adding filler to finish the face of the building. Now on Slim's warehouse I'm aiming for a more modern look. And so I'm going to use some fillers to fill in some of the joints to give you that more modern look instead of using pilasters that I'd normally use. You have a choice of fillers that you can use. It really doesn't matter. It's, that's more for personal choice. I really do recommend the Deluxe Materials Model Light. Um, but on this build, I'm going to use some smooth coat. And the reason for that is that this is a model aircraft product and a lot of the modelers are dealing with hobby shops that are basically model railway shops only and in that instance they're unlikely to be carrying this type of product so we're going to give this a go when you look at the face you'll see that there's a heavy engraved line in the center so you could leave that engraved line and fill the ones either side or you could leave all three I'm going to leave the outer two and fill the center one what we're really trying to achieve here is getting rid of this joint line uh, that zigzags its way up the building now as I put it on I will be filling in some of the um, other joint areas we'll clean them out with either a pick or with a razor saw the other thing I'm going to need to do, and it'll take a couple of coats to get this right, is that we'll just need to put a little bit of filler to build up the corner because these are slightly below the surface. Now you can see I'm filling it, all of it in. Don't worry about that at this stage. But it's the most important thing is just to build up enough material that you've got something to sand back. So I've now filled in all of the little grooves and bits and pieces that I want filled in but at the same time as I said before I've also filled a few that I don't want it and before the plaster goes too hard while it's still quite soft I'm simply just going to run my little scraper here along the line so as I do that you can see that the little expansion lines the little decorative concrete lines uh, going to show up you're not going to lose them be careful choose the ones that you that you want to remove the plaster one and that's it just work your way along carefully now you're going to end up with a little bit of a some leftover on the sides of these grooves 
leave it. Don't try and pick it all off right now. Let it dry and give it a sand. Okay, so I've now put all of the little plaster on. I've scraped out the lines that I want to keep. And, uh, and it's actually drying up really quite quickly because the coat is very thin. Nevertheless, I'm still going to let it sit for a good hour because I want that to be nice and dry. And when I first start to sand it, if it doesn't feel like it is, I'll leave it for another hour or so. I'm not really in a big hurry. The, uh, my experience tells me that a little bit of patience with this process gives you a great result. Now, after I've sanded and used a scraper to clean out the, uh, the grooves, just to define them a little bit better, I'll take a razor saw and just using the tip run up and down the lines just to give them a little bit more definition. And there we have a much more defined series of indents and, and uh, architectural detail. Pilasters and top of wall detail cap. And on the pilaster sheets you have a range of different thicknesses so you can put double pilasters and different combinations to uh, make your buildings look different. There's also a trim which you can use to go underneath. So I'm going to use the wide trim for the top and the thinnest trim to go up underneath it so you'll have a stepped edge. So I'll glue this one on and show you what I'm talking about. There you go, you can see that I've got the corner now done. Now of course this part will be trimmed off. What I'll do off camera is I'll just put a little couple of daubs of the filler on these joints. Okay, so as you can now see I've put the capping trim all the way around. I've put a little bit of filler where all the joints are to disguise them and I've done the same thing on the floors themselves. I'm now going to very gently give this a light rub back to clean it up and take it back so it's a nice feathered edge. Give it a very light coat over all of the filler areas with uh, some sander sealer. Adding mortar to the platform base. As you can see I have already painted the brick parts to the platform and next I'm going to be adding some filler to simulate the mortar in a brick wall. Now using my finger I simply take some of the filler and wipe it into the mortar joints. Be careful not to scrub it backwards and forwards too much or you'll disturb the paint. Now once the filler has dried I'll give it a very light sand just to take the filler back to the top of the bricks. So the filler has dried so I'm just going to lightly sand the filler back to the top of the surface of the brick. Next I'll brush on some Vallejo wash. I'll usually use a mid to light grey and apply coats until I get the depth of grey that I'm looking for. Assembling the platform base. Okay, so assembling the base is really simple. You've got two pieces that just key together like so, and then you get the other two pieces after they're glued together and join them at the ends. And the way I like to do it is I get a little bit of glue and put on the tab area. I use a couple of magnets, sort of a bit like a vise. I stick the other piece in and then just push it up so that you get a nice 90 degree corner. Okay so we've got the two halves done and then all you need to do is put a little bit of glue on those two halves like that. We've got a platform. Okay so that's how the platforms are going to go. Basically what you do is you line the base up. There is a, a center line and then a, a line, a thinner line in from that so you line that up with with that so that the gap between each of the platforms is equal of course I'm doing this upside down so it may not be quite right but you get the idea and the joint between the platform lines up with the center of the joint of the uh, panels themselves and so you glue the the, uh, the back surface to the panel and uh, the deck on top and then when you've done that use a little bit of filler just to bridge any gap that's here uh, leave it overnight give it a light sand a little bit of um, sander sealer on it afterwards 
and it's ready for painting. So overnight the filler has dried up nicely. Um, I've used uh, some of the scale modelers sanding blocks to uh, sand those back. Uh, unfortunately these blocks just don't fit through the doorway. Um, but these are good, they come in various um, grits so that's, that's all good. And then the other thing I did just for a little bit of detail is with my razor saw I lined up the existing groove on the platform and just very gently work my way across the back of it and now that's given me expansion joints all the way through that line up properly. Painting the walls. I'm using Vallejo Grey and I'm using some airbrush flow improver. The grey is a quite a thin mix but if you use the flow improver it'll help uh, when you're brushing make the brush marks uh, a little bit less prominent. So uh, from that point of view it's, uh, it's a good method to work with. By doing this you means you're going to be putting on a thinner coat and so you'll need to build the coats up. So it's probably a, a three coat exercise. Okay, so there's our first coat. And as you can see, there's lots of brush marks in this. But that's because it's quite thin. So as we build it up with another couple of coats, they will disappear and uh, all things being equal, you'll end up with a nice smooth finish that looks like concrete. Preparing the 3D parts for painting. Okay, so next we're going to prepare the 3D printed parts for painting. And what I've done for th items like the windows, uh, I have just got a little bit of masking tape, stuck it on a piece of timber, and um, stuck the, the uh, windows to it. The same thing with these little corner protectors for the roller doors at the, on the loading bay. But I've left those on their sprues and I'll cut them off afterwards because the very bottom of those you won't see. This is one of the awnings and you just simply take your sprue cutter and run along cutting the sprue nice and close. Now if you need a, a pair of sprue cutters these are very similar but about half the price of the uh, Godhand uh, sprue cutters. The good part about these cutters is they get down nice and close and then when you've cut away the material there'll still be some little pimples left just very carefully run them backwards and forwards on an emery board until you've got that surface uh, flat. To mount these up, let me show you what I do. I just, like I said, I get a bit of masking tape, peel it off, get a piece of timber, get another piece of masking tape to stick to it and pull it round, and then I pull it fairly tight, try not to bend the timber, but tight is good. Do the same thing on the other end and then just fold over the middle again put a little bit of tape across there just to hold it down nice and flat and then just simply grab your parts and lay them on and then add another piece but I'll do that afterwards so that's it quick simple but now you can hold the um, piece of timber and you can spray up and down the uh, items. Now items like these 44 gallon drums again just very carefully get your sprue cutter in and trim away the sprues. You may have a little pimple on the side just to get a nail file to give that a little bit of a clean and on the bottom same thing. This is a little hand trolley and what you want to do is work with anything like this. Work your way inward slowly but also cut away the sprue pieces so they're not in your way. For these pieces I like to attach a little piece of dowel or skewer to the 3D parts. Take your skewer, put a little tiny dob of glue, place it like so. Now these are painters racks, little items, especially little round items like um, the 44 gallon drums 
there's a little groove in there. You put your 44 gallon drum in the little groove, lining it up like so, push it up. And then work your way along doing the same thing to all those items. Okay, so here's the cool part about the painter's rack. Once all of the items are dry, the painter's rack gives you a great place to stand them up while you're waiting to paint the next item. You can also group the items into groups based on the colour they're going to be painted and which colour you're going to be painting next. This saves you time at the painting stage. So now I've grouped them into the 44 gallon drums, the packing crates and the pellets. When I start painting I'll simply take one, spray paint it and drop it into another rack. I've got a bunch of these, they're really really handy. They are available on our website. Um, painting the 3D parts. Uh, I'm going to be uh, undercoating with Vallejo uh, Ghost Grey. Um, it doesn't really matter too much but I do like to put a good undercoat on first. Um, different undercoat colours can affect the final coat depending on how thick or you know transparent the uh, final coat is. For what this particular build is this will be, be quite adequate. I also have a little bottle of a brew that I use. It is it's about 65% 70% thinner, 25% flow improver and then some retarder. Put about 20 to 30% of that in and mix it up and then uh, use a brush to, uh, to mix with and then I use the brush to help feed it into the airbrush itself. The airbrush that I'm using these days, Harder and Stenbeck um, airbrush, uh, it is the Evolution model. Um, this is really good because it comes with 0.2 and 0.4, so it's really two airbrushes in one. So it's a little bit more expensive than your average airbrush, but when you consider you're getting basically two good airbrushes in the one airbrush, um, it's quite good value for money. So, uh, so I absolutely recommend those. Okay, so it's time to get the spray booth going and applying some of the uh, undercoat to our parts. So basically what we're doing is just putting a light mist coat on everything in the first instant, trying to make sure we get all of the sides etc. And then we put that to one side, let it dry for a good 10 minutes and uh, do the next coat. But as you can see I'm not really putting a lot on at this stage. You want a little mist coat there to let the, to let the paint sort of dry and form a bond. Slim's Warehouse sign. Okay, so Slim's Warehouse is now painted and ready to start fitting some of the 3D parts. One of the items that I'm still to do is the 3D sign for it. And uh, we have a, uh, a nice little sign here that needs to be undercoated and painted in two colours to really make it stand out. So first up I need to trim off the, uh, the sprues, which I'm going to show you how I would go about doing that. So using a good pair of sprue cutters that gets you in nice and close, work your way down the side of the sign and then take that end supporting one away. And then when you've done that, go down the, uh, the very back and there's a large one at the base of where it glues onto the building. Then come to the front, just work your way along, snipping in as close as you can Let's just uh, pop it on and show you roughly what it's going to look like. So there we have it. And when you look at it from the back, you can see those little brackets. Now, so that face on the back of the sign is what's going to have glue on it. And we'll just line up the middle bracket with the middle of the column. That's how it's going to sit. Sims Warehouse sign, second colour. So Sims Warehouse sign needs to have the second colour put on it. Not being a, an artist, I've been pondering as to how I want to go about doing this. So this is a little bit of an experiment. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Israel sand, which is the same colour that the outside of the building is painted with, and I'm going to put some of my thinner mixture in it and get a nice brew mixed up of paint that will 
run reasonably easily and then very carefully just put it on and let it sort of run in around the letters and hopefully um, you'll end up with quite a nice looking sign. I'll start with with uh, about a 20% or 25% um, a mix of the thinner and just sort of see how that mix runs in the little container here. I want to just get it to the point where it's flowing. We'll start around the outer area first. Now with it thin like this you're just not going to get coverage in the first instance so I fully expect that um, we're going to need to give it a couple of coats. So I'm just sort of pushing the paint up to the letters. Now it's time to get a, a nice thin brush and do the same thing. In case of a steady hand and just take your time. You might need to rock the sign backwards and forwards a little bit as you go. So yes, I think uh, I think that's going to work out quite well. So I will keep going with it, show you the result um, once I've got this first coat on. Okay, so there's the first coat and as you can see it is a little splotchy. Um, but I think another coat probably will come close to doing it. Maybe a maybe a three coat exercise. And then just as a bit of a sneak peek, that's uh, where it's going to sit. Adding all the parts to the building. So we're now getting to the real fun part, the finishing stages. The next job is to just lightly sand the edges of the doors and the windows to make sure they fit to decide how far open you want the roller doors and whatever it is you're going to put behind it. Because this is a background building I'll find a couple of images of the inside of a warehouse to put on the background itself so that when you look through the windows and the doors there's something going on inside. But for now my next job as I said is to sand the windows and doors and just put them in, cut away part of the doors to have them open, the roller doors to have them open, fit things like the uh, wall, the doorway wall protectors and the hand the railings to go on the end um, and put some of our pallets and drums and bits and pieces on the platform and get it to the point where for the most part this is finished. Now when I get a little bit closer to that stage one of the things that we'll be doing is we'll also start weathering it. Um, so, so I'm just spraying some of the Vallejo washes uh, to generate uh, a dirt look and uh, some areas will be a little bit you know, more than others and also adding some powders and I've got some um, weathering pigments that I play around with and mix together from Sims, a uh, dusty concrete and, uh, and dust and so I'll be applying that on a few spots around the building just to sort of give it a bit more of that weathered look. Fitting the roller doors. Now I have made this door um, open by simply popping out a section of it and then gluing it back in. It will need some touch up as far as the painting is concerned. So let me just show you how I go about doing that. It's a very simple process and easy to do. So first of all you sand the edges of the door so that it fits into the opening. You pop it back out. The bottom of the door has a little um, sprue connectors so that it holds it together. So then you get your knife and uh, break away the little sprue connectors. Um, and just be careful because you don't want to remove the edges of the door. And it's the same thing across the top. Just run your knife along just to give it a little bit of a helping hand. And that should fall away. Then when you've done that you sand the tops off those little sprue connectors. Of course these legs on the door will need a bit of paint as well. Okay so now what we have done is we have pulled that apart. This bottom wider section is the bottom of the door and I've got this one fairly open um, but I'm going to make this one pretty much all the way. So I'm going to cut it through leaving one line above it. And so I'm just going to take the razor saw 
and run backwards and forwards to get a start and then once I've done that I'll take it off to the side so that I don't cut my board and at the same time I'll be careful not to run the teeth across the metal and I'll just work backwards and forwards and it'll, it will just slowly go through and that groove will make it nice and straight for you and there we go once you've done that take the piece that you don't want off to one side give the piece that you do want a little bit of a sand to take the edges off and then using your flat surface put a little bit of glue along the edge and glue them back in like so so that's uh, that's it easy as easy as that and then of course it'll just drop into the opening uh, but uh, I will touch the paint up before putting it in painting the background of the diorama now I'm no expert when it comes to painting things like dioramas etc but like a lot of the modelers out there I'm just going to give it a go and practice makes perfect as they say the process that I'm following is that first of all I've decided on the type of sky that I'm going for and that type of sky or color of sky rather ranges from a light bluey gray through to a more darker blue towards the top which is the type of skies that I'm used to seeing so first of all think about that part of the exercise and then simply give it a go I mean if you mess it up you can just paint over it it's not uh, a mission critical I suppose process so have fun try some different watercolor paints some acrylics from the local craft store and enjoy the process adding the finishing touches to Slim's warehouse diorama okay as you can see our diorama is coming along nicely I've now got the track glued down and uh, the Slim's warehouse has got its 3D parts all on the platform etc so let me first of all apologize somehow the footage shot of the finishing of the diorama has been misplaced so I'll do a video on those sorts of techniques in the future. But here is the finished diorama. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a nice looking flat building that uh, would fit many different scenarios. You may have noticed that on either side of the warehouse, there is a partial building. Simply all that is, is a couple of panels of different types added either side to represent part of a building. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video on the building of Slim's warehouse. Check out the playlist on other buildings that we manufacture. It's listed at the end of this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do so and ring the bell so you get notifications on more build videos. I'm Chris the Modeler at ABR Modelworks. Have a great day modeling and thanks for watching this video. Mm -hmm.